Hi guys. <clears throat> well, this is going to be kind of a quick continuation. There's a few things I want to go through. Uh, following the schematic and to the circuit, we had. Uh, let me sit down here and see if I can get in here. And uh, we were working on this tube here, and. Uh, I just wanted to show a couple other things here. Uh, again, we have another cap. It's three-legged. There's a leg here, ground, and another leg here. It's just like this one up here, hooking in. Uh, if you look at pin seven, which is this one right here, which also goes to the transformer, IF transformer, into ground, there's a capacitance there. We come down here and look uh, off of pin 6 here I'm at I think I said pin 7 I'm sorry about that it was pin 6 we have 21 B right here 20 C 21 B C 21 A is over here hooks to this one A2 this IF transformer and that's this connection right here. Now, the biggest thing that I want you to really get from this is in locating your parts is to, um, the main thing is the importance of the uh, pin numbers on the tubes. If your schematic doesn't have them, look them up, get them put on here. Because once you've located these, then it's not so hard to start following out and trying to find your parts and where they're at. So, you know, if you got, you know, you, you see pin one, you see it's going to a coil here, which is part of a transformer, then you know what you should be looking for. You know, pin five plate going to this transformer here. And so forth and you can start you know locating that out you know the tube layout you should either get that from the schematic or a tube chart that's on the uh, radio or TV or or something that you know you know which tubes are which and where they're at you got the tube pin numbers from that point you can actually trace things out and start finding stuff now the one point which I made once before again I want to reiterate it and we'll flip this around is the fact that sometimes things are not always what appears on the schematic here's the video amp right here and this is a contrast control which connects to pin 7 as well as a 1.2 meg resistor that connects up to pin 1 and then there's a resistor and capacitor that also connects to pin 1 well we can find pin 7 we can find this resistor we can find these connections but what about this now it appears to be right here by the tube in reality it's at the front of the chassis well if we look on the tube and we count out our pins we will find that this pin here, here's pin 7, here's pin 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a 1.2 meg here, hooking to pin 1 to pin 7, and then that's got, there's that capacitor and the resistor that hooks to pin 1, what else is connected up off this pin? Well, pin 7 also connects to pin 2 here, which shows down on the schematic. Pin 7 connects to pin 2, pin 2 suppressor grid. So we found all those connections. Now the contrast is not here. There's no control set in here, but there is a wire, this wire that connects there. And that's a real long wire because it went out into the front of the radio to the contrast control so 
not always is everything located right here they can be located somewhere else but if you know where the tube is you know where the pinouts is you can find the wire that connects and you can follow that wire and then find that component so that's all I'm trying to really point out more than anything in this is that knowing your pin numbers and getting them on here and you can find everything from that point because it's easy to find a tube socket so once you know you got the right tube socket then you can start following out those circuits now something else I want to talk about this cap and this cap I stuffed them but they're not actually the tubes that were in there <coughs> and the reason they weren't was because they're oil filled this is the tube the socket that's on or the capacitor it'd be this one here right here 0 0.2 400 volts is what I the closest thing I could find uh, it's a 0.22 and that's what this actually says it, it's 200 volts but that's fine because actually what it replaced was a 630 volt but Duramold made by Dumont Electric and their um, well Dumont this is not the Dumont TV this is Dumont Labs but anyway the thing I wanted to point out is it says Duramold molded oil capacitor Bakelized tube 100 degrees centigrade now what that means is is not only is it filled with oil and it's a high, higher temp normal tube now there is some soft wax beeswax all over the tube and on these ends but these ends will not on these open up with a heat gun they will not melt you can sit there all day long with a heat gun running at max and you will not melt these ends at all they will not melt I guarantee it you'll have to burn the tube up to even get them loose and that's what you'll end up doing the tube will completely be destroyed so uh, consequently you can't stuff them I mean without just you know I suppose you could slice them uh, I'd rather just keep the oil in there because uh, I'm not sure what oil they're using in this now something I wanted to point out though they're not the only type of caps that does have oil in them there's other caps uh, a lot of your bumblebee caps have oil in them and something I wanted to point out on this one this is how the TV is don't know if you can see it but there's a crack right there so it has uh, probably leaked some moisture in the ends is usually where they do uh, these will not seal they cannot you know you can't get them to seal they're not going to stay sealed uh, a lot of it's due to heat and expansion the metal expands at a different rate than uh, plastic does but anyway once moisture gets in there they start shorting out they heat up and they split now this had uh, I wiped it off but it had some of the oil on it uh, one way you can tell for sure if it has actual liquid oil in them is they'll have a, a dab of uh, area here where they solder the wire in and some dab of solder right there uh, they actually that tube is actually kind of open it has an opening inside here and it will that's how they fill the rest what's remaining oil that they can fill in here the papers already impregnated with oil and then they'll fill the rest of it in to fill up the void through this and then they solder this in now some molded ones this is a molded one that isn't oil as you can see there is no uh, real solder on them at all this is a new old stock 
one thing I wanted to point out on new old stock, see how long the leads are? Okay, this cap's no good. Here is a sprague. Um, the biggest thing I wanted to show you is how dirty it is. This is not wax, this is oil that has leaked out of this cap. And it's then picked up dirt and stuff on it over time. That's what they'll look like. Uh, one last little thing too is here's a new old stock bumblebee cap. Bumblebee caps have stripes. They're just straight black bodied, especially sprigs actually because they're the ones that coined the name as part of their advertising. Black Beauty. Okay. Want to clarify that. But one other thing, for any of you that is the guys who likes building audio amps and stuff, I know these are popular in some circles um, to buy these and put them in. Uh, these fail just as fast as these do, if not faster. And the big, big thing is, again, is because they leak past the ends here. They get moisture in there, and then they short and then they're no good they start leaking on you they may eventually just crack open like this uh, I know these are being sold like crazy on on uh, eBay and the funny thing is and the reason why I wanted to show you uh, a new old stock cap is I've, I've seen them on here looking like this on eBay and they'll say you know leads about this short or even shorter and they'll say it's new old stock you know they've cleaned them up shined them up, made them look like, you know, cleaned the wires up on them and stuff, and go, it's new old stock. Yet the leads are real short. And I know right off the bat, that's not new old stock. That's a used capacitor that's been cut out. New old stock had real long leads on them when they're new. So, because they didn't know, you know, the companies that made these knew that there could be some points that real long distance they had to cover so even if they are new old stock they're gonna fail they probably already on the shelf or in the box are already leaked and because like I say these do not seal around them leads do not use them uh, if, if you use one say as a coupling capacitor into your output tubes uh, it starts leaking you're going to get a positive voltage on that grid that's going to draw more current that tube's going to start wanting a red plate on it it's going to destroy the tube if you keep pushing it and some of those audio output tubes you know as well as I do are quite expensive so put new modern caps in there It'll save you a lot of headache and a lot of money down the road. If you want something like this, you can make these. You can either mold them up and make them out of like epoxy or whatever, and then paint it black and paint your stripes on for your size. Uh, you can get you some tube. You can use plastic tubing, cardboard tubing, whatever. You know, plastic would probably be best. And then put epoxy in the ends with a new, brand new cap inside. And then paint it black and paint your stripes on there for your size. You know, whatever you want to do, when you're done, it's going to look like the same thing. So you got the looks, yet it's got a new style cap in it that's not going to fail. It's going to last a good many, 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 many years. So, again, they fail, but also there are a lot of these that do our oil and just to let you know now not all the cardboard tubes are filled with oil cannot be open that was just that particular brand that that put uh, I don't know it's some sort of really hard almost like a baked light or something like that but it's highly hard uh, uh, temperature uh, take a lot of temperature to melt it if it ever melts uh, long before it ever melts you're going to destroy the tube but there were other brands that used just regular uh, ends in them that you see in the regular tubes. 
But the thing I want to also state is if you uh, open up a radio or a TV and you find, you know, a paper cap that's liquid, you know, it, it's sticky and it's liquidly, but it's cold. Maybe it hasn't even been on. You know, you just bought the darn thing. It has been on. The previous owner never turned it on. Uh, if it if the wax gets hot, say the cap's leaky and it's getting hot and the wax gets hot, once it cools down, it's going to cool right back down and it's going to be just like like it was before, other than it's going to show, you know, some spot where it ran to. But if it's still wet and it's cold, that's oil. It's oil that's inside these. It's leaking out. So, anyway, uh, a little talk about both things. Again, remember, tube numbers are vitally important to you. It's easy to find the tube socket, obviously, in any chassis. And it's easy to find either from the tube chart, from the schematic, or from something that will you'll know that you know this is V1, this is V2, or whatever, however they number them, or you know this is the converter tube, or, or you know detector tube, IF tube, whatever. But you'll so you know which tube it is. You got the tube numbers on your schematic, and from that you can trace out all your different components. You can find those components by just simply tracing. And again, if they're far away, trace the wire that hooks from there. There's going to be a wire hooked to it, just like on this contrast control. And you can trace that back. So, uh, I hope this was informative as well with the capacitors and as well as this. Um, I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to be thorough on this, but it uh, I might do a little more about this, you know, at least especially with the long leads and, and stuff that does have long leads and it's short on the on here, looking short on the schematic. This is only partial schematic. Uh, I might do something on that. But otherwise, uh, that's about all I have for you for today. And uh, so... I want to thank you for watching and thanks to my new subscribers. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, there's more videos like this. I do videos on different things on radios and TVs. And uh, I guess, I'll, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, hopefully in the next video we'll be able to get this guy back in place. Get him back bolted in. Get the... Uh, uh, tuner bolted back in. We'll start replacement of. I already start checking some of them. There's quite a few uh, out of tolerance, way out of tolerance resistors, and of course caps and stuff. And uh, we'll start working on the main chassis. So, until next time, thanks for watching. You guys have a good day, and I'll see you on the next video.